Joining us now, member of both the Finance and Intelligence Committee, Senator Michael Bennett, the Democrat from Colorado. He made news yesterday with a direct rebuke of Ted Cruz on the Senate floor over the government shutdown. The Democrats are fond of using the phrase hostage taking. They are quite literally holding the men and women of the Coast Guard hostage because they want to win a political victory against the president. Their objective here is have the president back down and have not a single mile of border wall built. These crocodile tears that the senator from Texas is crying for first responders are too hard for me to take. They're too hard for me to take. Because when, you sh when the senator from Texas shut this government down in 2013, my state was flooded. It was underwater. People were killed. People's houses were destroyed. Their small businesses were ruined forever. And because of the senator from Texas, this government was shut down for politics. Senator, good morning. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it, as always. Um, let's, let's get you talking a little more about your frustration there, because I think you spoke for a lot of Americans. When they look at these stories of 800,000 <laughs> furloughed workers missing a second paycheck, when they look at all the contractors not working at all and the fallout of this shutdown, they look back and they say, why are we here? Why are we yeah. doing this? It's because the president wanted to deliver on a wall because he led chants during the 2015 and 16 right. election. And now he's found Republican senators to help him in that cause. He led a bunch of chants on what turned out to have been a mnemonic device to remind him that at every whistle stop, he should divide the American people over immigration. And now, because it turns out that it was a lie and that Mexico won't pay for the wall, which we knew all the time. He's now uh, shut the government down to insist that the American taxpayers pay for it. And I think the, the thing for most Americans, and certainly most Coloradans, is that we still would like to think that we're a great country and that we'd like to pursue in the 21st century health care for everybody, education that's a high quality for everybody build our infrastructure, all of that stuff. And instead, we find ourselves in this perpetual battle in the nation's capital that has nothing to do with the priorities of the American people, to say nothing of the 800,000 federal employees and contractors who, as you say, have missed their second uh, <coughs> paycheck. I mean, this is so ridiculous. The idea that we're shut down is one thing, but the idea that we're not pursuing a set of priorities that's important to the future of the country when China is pursuing their priorities is, uh, is an embarrassment, I think, to we a had, lot of people. We had your colleague, Senator Merkley, sitting here just a minute ago. I'll put the same question to you I put to him, which is that we all understand the outrages around this shutdown and the fallout and the pain it's caused many people. But you're in a unique position of being able to do something about it. So if we can be productive here and we can be constructive, what's the way out of it? How do we get these people back to work ending the shutdown? Well, I think that we should just end it now, period. And, and there is, if you saw the votes yesterday on the floor of the Senate, you'll know that there's more than a majority of senators who want to open it. Clearly, the House would like to open it. The difficulty that we have is that we've got somebody in the White House uh, who's, to be, to be polite about it, probably the most idiosyncratic deal maker that's ever been in that place. Mm -hmm. and, and my Republican colleagues, and I have sympathy for them, have absolutely no idea what settlement Donald Trump will accept to open the government again. And since we don't know that, my view is that Mitch McConnell should put a clean continuing resolution on the floor. We should vote for that. The House will vote for that. And then we should override President Trump's veto. I think that's how we should proceed if he's unwilling to do what's necessary here. And Rick Tyler, according to the Washington Post this morning, in that closed door meeting with Senate Republicans, the majority leader said, this shutdown was not my idea and it's not working and went on to talk about how in principle he's against shutdowns. Yeah, and by the way, we shouldn't, we should never shut the government down for politics uh, or for anything else for that matter. I, I said last night in the conversation I was having with Tr Ted Cruz, there has been this deliberate attempt 
to separate the federal government from the American people. I have lots of problems with the federal government, but it, it, we live in a democratic republic, and when you separate the government from the people in a democracy, bad things happen. We need, as Americans, to reclaim our government, to insist that uh, that people here operate to the same standard that elected officials operate at home. No school board. I used to be a school superintendent. There's not a school board in America that would shut their government down for a political disagreement, and that's true of municipalities and and any any government that's involved in the pluralistic exercise of self-government. And that's what we were designed to do here, and that's what we should do here. And it's been a long time, frankly. Uh, um, even before Donald Trump got here, that the Freedom Caucus has allowed people to govern this place the way the American people expect it to be governed. Senator Rick Tyler has a question for you. Rick? Senator Bennett, I, I agree with you that uh, shutdowns should never be uh, used for political purposes. Uh, and as you know, any other employer who forced people to work without pay would face serious legal consequences. But what I've not heard is after the shutdown, how are we going to protect federal workers uh, from the situation they find themselves in ever again? Would you support an escrow account as one idea uh, so that so the government workers get paid during a, a shutdown? Because a future shutdown to me with this president seems inevitable, inevitable. or do you have any other, other ideas of legislation to protect uh, federal workers from missing out on their paycheck, uh, an honest day's pay for an honest day's work. Well, first of all, I would support the, I would support the idea of an escrow. I think that's a good idea. The bill that I have, uh, which I've had for several years now, is a bill that says that if the government shuts down, the Senate should report to the chamber at 8 o'clock in the morning the next day of the shutdown and not leave until we resolve our differences. It says that senators that don't show up can be arrested, which is what the, the rules are of the Senate by the sergeant of arms, and taken to the Senate floor to be there. The problem we've got right now, I think, is that when we have a shutdown like this, the only people that suffer no consequences at all are politicians in Washington, D.C. If we align the interests of those politicians with the federal workers who are not getting paid, who are losing their jobs, uh, who are having to look for other work uh, with the federal workers, I think you'd find this government would probably never shut down, or if it did, that it would be open 10 minutes later. Eugene Scott. Senator, uh, the president continues to say that Democrats aren't working with him because you all do not support uh, border security. And there are conservatives in Colorado who are concerned about mm -hmm. that. What would you tell them right now, it's your plan, uh, to make the border more secure without funding a border wall? Thank you. So when I was in 2013, I was part of the Gang of Eight that negotiated the immigration bill in the Senate. It passed with 68 votes. It had $46 billion of border security in it. The first two words of the title of that bill were border security. It built 350 miles of what the president now calls steel slats. It doubled the number of uh, border agents on, on our border. It had internal security. So finally, in the United States, we could know who who had overstayed their visa and 40% of the people here who are undocumented are people who came legally to this country but overstayed their visa. We, because that bill has not passed, we have no capacity to know who those people are and who we want to keep and who we want to send back. Your point about people in Colorado that are conservative is absolutely true. My state is a third Republican, a third Democratic, and a third Independent. When I went to, right before I went to work on the Gang of Eight, I created something called the Colorado Compact on Immigration traveled all over the state, developing principles based on what people at the local level were saying they wanted to do with our broken immigration system. The first signatories on, that, on, that, on those principles was a group called Club 20, which is one of the most conservative groups in my state. But they supported the, that compact and they supported the Gang of Eight bill because they know what's happening to farms and ranches and, and dairy operations all over this country because of this foolishness in Washington, D.C. At home, there is a consensus on what we should do with our border. We should strengthen it. 
at home there is a consensus on what we should do with the 11 million undocumented people that are here. We should cre create a rigorous pathway to citizenship. And that is what was reflected in the 2013 bill, and it passed the Senate with a bipartisan majority. And as I mentioned last night, because of the idiotic Hastert rule, it never came to a vote on the floor of the House of Representatives. And now we have a president who got into the White House by demagoguing immigrants, by demagoguing uh, our history as, an, as a nation of immigrants and our commitment to the rule of law. And, and that, I think, is why people at home are so frustrated with the insanity of what's going on here. Senator, you're on the Intel Committee. You may have special interest in the news that broke this morning that advisor, both formal and informal, to President Trump, Donald Trump, during the 2016 <clears throat> campaign was indicted on seven counts by a grand jury out of the special counsel's office and arrested in Florida this morning. What's your reaction? Well, look, there's been, I think, over 30 people have been indicted now as a result of these probes. Uh, more than eight people, I think, have uh, pleaded guilty. This is serious business at a time when, when we've got a president who's not committed clearly to the rule of law, not committed to freedom of the press, not committed to the oversight role of Congress. It is incumbent, it is imperative that all of us, whether we're senators or whether we're citizens at home, uh, do everything we can to defend the Mueller investigation. I think that's what we need. I think we need to hear our Republican colleagues saying this isn't a witch hunt, this isn't insane, this is a serious criminal investigation and we've got to get to the bottom of it. Is there any doubt in your mind based on what you know, what you've heard this morning or what you know privately or frankly just based on what we all know publicly that Roger Stone was working as an intermediary between the Trump campaign and Russia WikiLeaks as well. Well, look, look I, I want to make, as somebody who believes in the rule of law, I want to uh, allow the investigation to complete itself and the legal uh, case com uh, to be complete. But there's no question that he was engaged in unsavory activity, and and we'll see whether it rises to the level of of, cr of criminality. Uh, but you know, we should be deeply, deeply concerned at the degree to which Russia interfered with our election uh, in 2016 and their plans to interfere with it again. That is something we need to defend ourselves against. And that's another thing that Republicans and Democrats should be working together to make sure we prevent. Senator Michael Bennett, Democrat of Colorado, we appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so much. But Thanks so much for having me. Coming up, we'll talk to another top Democrat about the breaking news that longtime Trump associate Roger Stone has been indicted in the Mueller investigation and arrested this morning in Florida. Senator Chris Coons will be our guest ahead on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.